moral and political walls of our nation are crumbling. When I see the changes, I feel helpless. What can one person do? We don't feel like we could change anything. But as Christians, we have a responsibility for our voice to be heard. He's going to 50 states to hold prayer rallies and to encourage people to in vote. In Franklin Graham's words, it's a campaign. He did urge everyone to get involved in the political process. I'm going to go to every state capital to get the church motivated to get involved in the political process. What a huge challenge to go to all 50 state capitals in the course of one year. Let's start a movement across this country to turn this nation back to God. You're expecting a crowd to come. How's that going to work? This is the time. We've got an opportunity. But the question people have is, Franklin, what can I do? Now, I may make some people mad. But let me tell you something. America needs to hear the Christian voice. It's not that the enemy is at the gate. The enemy's already come through the gate. Because we left the gates wide open. America's in trouble. I've watched our country just digress morally. Christians are being marginalized. As I was reflecting on my life, I'm 63 this year, be 64 in a few months. I just look at the country and realize that my grandchildren are not going to have the same opportunities that I have. There's not a political party that's going to be able to turn this thing around. The only way this country can be turned around is by God. God is giving this idea to go to every state capital and stand on the steps and do a prayer rally and to encourage men and women in this country to not be ashamed of their faith. Franklin felt that 2016 was a pivotal year to get people out, to have their voices heard. So we started preparing for the Decision America tour. Currently, I think right now, the music is a side item just to getting you up there. You know me. First reaction was, what a huge challenge that is. At the same time, it was an incredible excitement. Every venue is going to be a little different. It's just something that has been building over the last couple of years in my heart and mind that something needs to be done. And if we don't, this may be the last election that we're going to have the opportunity to do this. Your Facebook page has shaken up a lot. Uh, you know, Greta, our nation is in trouble, it's in a mess. And uh, starting in January uh, 5th, I'm, I'm going to be going to all the capitals, state capitals, holding prayer meetings on the, on the steps of the capitol. And we start in Des Moines, Iowa. The first Decision America tour stop was right before the Iowa caucus. It sounded good on paper, but will it work? fear is, will anyone show up? The morning of the event, Franklin called me and he said, Lawrence, what do you think? And I'm like, wow, Franklin, you know, given the weather and this first event in the middle of a work day, if we have 350, I think I'll be ecstatic. I pulled up three hours early. The wind was blowing. There's snow on the ground. It's 23 degrees outside. I know I had the jitters. I'm sure Franklin had the jitters. I'm always nervous before I get up to speak. It doesn't matter. I'm always nervous. When we drove up on the bus, and I remember looking out the window and you know, thinking, well, I you know, hope somebody shows up. To see the huge crowd, it was an exciting moment, but also it was fearful because you could see God's hand and I just want to make sure that my stand before God was correct. We had several thousand people out there, and you just sensed right then God was doing something. The rallies are really the culmination of weeks and months of prayer on the part of God's people. He's raising up churches that are willing to say, we'll pray, we'll draw a line in the sand, and when God's people pray, He answers. I'm encouraged that you care so much about your state, uh, your community, and our country that you would come out to be with us. Our country is in trouble. It's in big time trouble. What's happened is godlessness 
has come into this nation of ours whose foundations were built on biblical principles. Our laws, all that we have has come from God. And no political party is going to be able to turn this around. My only hope is in Almighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Our moral walls and gates of a nation are down. And our politicians are more concerned about political correctness than about God's truth and His righteousness. Well, I'm here today to say I'm not going without a fight. There is a bus tour rolling through our country aimed at getting Christian voters to the polls. In Franklin Graham's words, is a campaign for God. He is calling this the biggest election in our history. He is running the Decision America Tour, and he joins us now. We've got an opportunity to make a difference in this country. We have like thousands here. I'm so looking forward to this. It's amazing that people are showing up, even on a work day. There was no room left for anyone on the state capitol steps, so they gathered wherever they could just to hear Franklin Graham. 7,000 people gathered out here at the State House for today's event, all to hear Franklin Graham deliver a message of faith. Thousands of people flocked to the State Capitol today to hear from someone who isn't running for anything. It's awesome. If you get the community together, it will spread all over the state. Thank you for being a part of this today. To God be the glory. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the privilege of being in Austin, Texas. I don't get up and speak any time without prayer. Just asking God not only to forgive my sins, but to fill me with his Holy Spirit power. Be with Franklin today as he speaks. We need to be bold and we need to stand up and we need to be heard, because if we don't, we're going to lose this country. And you know what each star means? If we as Christians don't begin to take a stand now, my little girl and her generation will no longer know the freedoms and the privileges that her grandparents once knew. Hi, people. Look at those. Those people. I'm wanting to put God back into politics in America. I want to look at something that happened in the book of Nehemiah. And in chapter Sin one, is a big issue. America needs to confess our sins. We need to repent. The children of Israel are in bondage because of the sin of their nation. God brought judgment. And Nehemiah writes, the wall of Jerusalem is broken down. Its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. I confess the sins. Nehemiah confessed his sins to God. He confessed the sins of his family. He confessed the sins of his people, his nation. God heard Nehemiah's prayer. God gave him favor. And ladies and gentlemen, we need God's favor today. America needs to confess our sins. We need to repent. Maybe if we go across this country and we can get one man or one woman in each state capital to truly repent, maybe God will hear our prayers and maybe he'll forgive our sins and bring favor once again to our country. Oh, beautiful. I've been traveling with Franklin Graham since 1975, he sees that our country is in real trouble. And he talks about controversial things, but the way he says it is, is not degrading people, but it pierces the heart and it's powerful. It really is.
You know, anytime you're doing an event uh, that's calling people to prayer and salvation, Satan is going to come against you. We've had various uh, problems and situations and difficulties, and every state capital and every situation is very different. Where's it going? It's going in front of that rail. We're going to use that rail to tie it down. All right. If it doesn't work, then we got to come up with some plan. The danger is thinking you could just waltz in as a pastor or as a, as a teacher or someone like Franklin getting up and preaching. Well, I know the message, no big deal. It's not, no, it doesn't work that way. Things can happen. This is what I was afraid of. Uh, lost power twice. You've got problems with the tech, you've got problems with the mic. It happens all the time, especially when you're gonna have people accept Christ. We gotta have more people because we're gonna be pushed for time. Keep going along the top that road. Something's fluctuating big time. I don't know what that is. That's good. Okay, guys, here we go. What God wants is obedience. That's all, just obedience. And if we're willing to obey Him, then He'll give us what we need to get it done. America is being stripped of biblical heritage and our God-given, biblically inspired foundations. There's no hope for America outside of the church of Jesus Christ taking a stand. And you've got to take a stand. modern America today, we must admit there is a vacuum of the soul. People have asked me, what would your father do? I think if my father were my age today, he'd be doing exactly the same thing. The Bible teaches that God will judge any nation that turns its back on him, especially a nation like America, which has been given privileges and responsibilities more than any nation in history. You know, a lot of people come up to my father and say, hey, Billy Graham wouldn't be doing this. You know, why are you doing this, Franklin? And, and the truth is, you know, that my, my grandfather was involved in all this. Back then, it just wasn't controversial. America is too young to die. I do not believe that we as Americans and Christians should withdraw. We need men and women of integrity and Christian commitment who will run for political office this coming year. My father spoke out a number of times throughout the years, encouraging Christian participation, encouraging Christians to run for office, encouraging Christians to vote, saying it is their responsibility. And in the last number of years, uh, we have allowed people to discourage Christians from getting involved and, and voting. It's a little bit different than the kind of things that we normally do. It might get a little wild at times. Uh, you, you may have protesters and that sort of stuff, but that's okay. So you talk about a battleground. It's a battleground, but it's a different kind of battleground. When we have a stadium, we control that stadium. When you're on the Capitol steps, we don't control it. So it's a little different. Thank you for being here today. What Franklin is doing is dangerous. You're not on a platform in an arena or a stadium where you're far away from people. You're within three, four feet. We have no idea who's going to come. Can you sign this for me? Sure, go ahead. He loves people. That's Franklin. A lot of states, protesters can come right up to you within, you know, five feet of you, and if they choose to shout you down, uh, that's their freedom of speech. Right here, right here, right now. There was a little tension in the atmosphere because there was some people here that was uh, trying to be antagonistic. Stop speaking wickedness. And so, of course, there was some spiritual tension going on. There's nothing wrong with me. We're fine and beautiful just the way we are. In my opinion, Franklin Graham is a false prophet. We should welcome opposition. Now that's a hard thing to do. I mean, it's easy to say, 
but it's a hard thing to do. Jesus said, if they hate you, they hated me first. So it shouldn't surprise us. 
most elections are not won by millions of votes, they're won by just a handful of votes. And so every vote is important. What he got me on, he said, what about our local elections? I never heard anybody say this like this. The mayor's races, you know how important the mayor races are? We need Christian men and women running for mayors. How about city council? We need people to run for city council. County commissioner, school boards. Could you imagine if the majority of the school boards across this state were controlled by evangelical Christians? It would be huge. We need to get Christians engaged. 20 to 30 million Christians did not vote in the last election. Christians did stay home when they could have done something. So many didn't even vote in the last two elections. Matter of fact, I was one of them. Photographers, you're all, uh, you're all set. I've read the news release that says you're not campaigning or endorsing. No, I have not endorsed uh, any candidates. This rally is about getting people to vote and voting for people across this country at every level. And that's why I, I, I want to see men and women who believe the Bible to be true, uh, to run for office, because we need people that have standards, moral standards. There's no moral standards anymore. My father said in 1976, get involved in the political process. He said, I'd like to challenge every deeply committed American who's qualified to think about running for political office. He said, I don't believe that we as Christians should withdraw. We need Christians at every level. We got to get the more of us to run. Uh, if we'll do that, I believe God will use it and give, it, give us favor. There are many places where Christian men and women could get the vote if they only offer themselves. Listen, every one of you here could run for something and probably win. We need men and women in office who will look to God. The thing that really impacted my life is when he asked us to make a pledge. I'd like to ask you to join me in signing a pledge. This is serious business. We're fighting for our country. Number one, I pledge to honor God at home. I pledge to honor God in public. I pledge to pray faithfully for the United States of America. Most were things you might expect, and people were saying amen and agreeing with him. I pledge to honor God with my vote. And he came to the fifth one. He said, I pledge to engage in my community with God's truth and will prayerfully consider running for office myself if God so leads me. Well, a few less, but good. People were a little nervous about that, and so I'm praying along in my heart and, and asking the Lord if He really wants me to do that. Uh, I felt like He was tugging at my heart, telling me, that, <coughs> excuse me, that I needed to get involved and, and that I needed to consider running for the school board. It was like the Lord whispered to me and said, you need to get back in the game. We need to do something as Christians. He's put us here for a reason. I was really comfortable in my own little niche. And running for office wasn't even a part of my thinking. It's easy to say you want to see change and you want to get involved, but actually doing it is what I want my kids to see. I knew that God was leading me to file and run for the state house. I will be pursuing this race for Congress. It's time that we quit being afraid. It's time that we quit backing up. We take a stand. We take a stand for God's truth. This was probably the most moving event I've ever been to. It's time for God's people to stand up. We're not just to take our light and hide it under a bushel. We're to set it up so the whole world to see it. Franklin came today with the torch, lit us on fire, and said, OK, now let's go and let's burn for our city. This is huge. Today's just the beginning. I couldn't stop taking pictures and videos because I always want to remember this. We need to rise up and not be passive, not be sitting at home. This is one massive group of people saying, we're not going to take things the way they are. We're going to change things together. What impacted me the most was to not stand idly by, I need to be part of the solution. The message was clear, get involved. Now it's just a wake up call for me that I need to register to vote now. We can't help but be excited. We can't help but 
raise the flag. We can't help but shout hallelujah all day long. I'm stoked, man. I'm ready. Go home and vote and get others to vote. Run for office. Let's take this nation back. Now, you may be sitting at home wondering, what can I do? First of all, I want you to pray for our nation and its leaders. Second, I want you to vote and be registered to vote and go out and take your family and friends to be sure you vote this election. And third, I want you to prayerfully consider at some point in the future, running for office yourself and making a difference in your community for Almighty God. I want to give you a chance to sign the same pledge that people all across America have been signing. I want you to go to our website right now. I want you to look up this pledge and I want you to read it and I want you to sign it. You see, it's a pledge to God and it's a pledge to country. Do it right now. This nation needs your help and God is wanting to use you. As we close, I want to thank those of you that have stood with us this year. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you so much for your financial support. We need an ongoing partnership as we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in these very trying and difficult days. Thank you so very much, and God bless you. Partner with the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association in proclaiming the gospel around the world. As a thank you for any gift, you'll receive a DVD that includes this program and the brand new film from My Hope, Decisions. Experience three stories interwoven with a powerful message from Franklin Graham on life's most important decision. Partner with us through your prayers and financial support. Call now or go to BillyGraham.tv. There was a problem inside of me that no one knew about. At that moment, it felt like something was ripped right out of my chest. I didn't want to be on this earth anymore. I made that decision to bury that secret inside of me. You kind of fear for your life a little bit. Who have I given my trust to? People I don't have any idea who they are. Decisions. We all have made bad decisions. A single decision changed everything for me. I just broke down. I had no words. I said, oh my goodness, are you crazy? One purpose motivates this preacher to travel to the far reaches of the globe. He gave his life and shed his blood for you and for me. The purpose? The simple message of salvation through Jesus Christ. We are the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. And our mission is to do everything we can to reach each life with the good news of Jesus Christ.